Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals, and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I hope this episode is finding you well. I hope you are good. If you are new here, hello, welcome, come and get comfortable. Today we are going to talk about something that I think might be interesting. We're going to talk about launching, well, can you sell, should you sell while your competitor's launching, kind of protocol around that, what to do if your competitor is launching, this kind of stuff, because I think it's really interesting. It's come from a conversation I had where someone said, I um, plan to run this campaign at this time, but I know that my competitor or big player in the industry is doing this thing on that time and they felt like they couldn't do it and I know I've already just gone straight into the conversation here <laughs> but I think I you know I don't like any fluff I like to just give you what you need so we can make this sharp and sweet um, and that's what we're going to dive into today and I think it's a topic that many of us can relate to in the sense of everybody has a competitor everyone has industry leaders doesn't matter what your industry is you know everybody has some kind of competitor or um, you know alternative that people can purchase from and I think this comes up and might manifest in different ways for different people but I think this episode will be helpful to everyone whether you are the industry leader or whether you are someone who isn't because this is the other thing to think about is that the people you may view as your industry leader them themselves will already themselves have another person that they look at as an industry leader so that was one of my first points is to think about for you is we have to start putting pe- stop putting people on these hierarchy and podiums and um, stadiums almost of like who's who and what this means and stuff like that. It's important to understand your competitors and understand the market that you operate in and, you know, see that and hopefully see a diverse range of competitors in your market. But I think it's also very important that you understand that that is still just the orbit of what you are existing in on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. It is not the full extent of the work you do and, you know, where you're at and all that kind of stuff because we never know everyone that's going on and everything that's happening. So the first thing I want to say to you is to validate this idea that if you find out your competitor is launching something new, maybe they're launching something that they launch every year or every, you know, twice a year or whatever, it's okay to feel this initial like, oh, okay, does that mean I can sell? Does it not? Etc, etc. And, you know, it's normal, it's human nature if we feel threatened in some way, which we're going to get onto in a moment, that we maybe have that. What I want to say that isn't okay and that I don't like to see and that I don't think is positive and what I have see happen and I see it happen a lot is where people choose to go from another perspective of actually trying to pull somebody down. And that is not cool. So there is, across industries, you know, this is normal, as much as that breaks my heart to say, it is very normal for competitive industries to have unsupportive alternative suppliers, should we say, and it's not it's not friendly, it's not cool. And I just wanted to say that if you are a leading competitor listening to this and you know that there are some people in your industry who do seek you out as being the competitor, that it isn't fair for you. It's not okay. It's not okay for people to try and pull apart your business just so that you don't succeed. And we've seen this happen before. It can happen in different industries and it is a bloody awful feeling. It's an awful thing to happen and it's not okay. Now, if you are listening to this and you are nowhere near being a leading competitor and you feel like you will never get there, then okay. But you need to also understand yourself as to why you might feel a certain way. So even in these kind of first five minutes that we've spoken here I get that we've been on a vast roller coaster of being a leading competitor not being being really positive about it and not being but I think that's the the nuance of this topic and that's why I wanted to bring it to a podcast today is because there is nuance it is wide and vast and there is different things to think about so what I want to ultimately say on this as just an overarching concept is I believe that you should sell regardless of what everybody else is doing. So 
if you are a business, I don't care what your size is, I truly believe you should be selling every day something to somebody, whether that's you have an evergreen model, you have something that's semi-passive or passive, whether you have something that works as a funnel behind the scenes and you don't have to actively do it, whether you're actively selling at some way, in some shape or form, you want to be selling every day. So with that mentality, you do not need to worry about what's going on around you in your space because you are focused on your business, on your customers, on your potential customers and serving them at the highest level. So when you find out this information or when you see that somebody is launching, it shouldn't be this kind of big debacle and it shouldn't be a big issue because you are just like, yep, okay, that's fine. Like, that's normal. That's business. I expect that. It's going to happen. And I'm just going to continue on my merry way. I think when people get threatened and they feel uncertain about things, often it's because they're so out of line with what they're doing themselves anyway. It highlights to them that they have no clue what's going on, they have no plan, they have no strategy, they have no growth, forward thinking apparatus to help them move forward and so they find it even more difficult to deal with someone else who on the surface may look like they're succeeding. Now we never know that, so this is the other thing I want to say. Just because your competitor is launching, that means absolutely nothing and doesn't give you any kind of reference point as to what is actually going on in their business. But I think launches are a perfect time where it goes very wrong very quickly in terms of what we perceive things to be. Now, moving on to that, we need to think about why you should be selling and why it's a good thing. And, you know, if you've listened to this podcast or if you know me outside of the podcast, you will know that I talk about selling a lot and I believe in the power of selling. And I think that you have a duty to sell. If you are good at what you do, and that's the key thing, if you are good, (laughs) you've got to be extremely good at what you do. But I know if you're listening to this, you probably are. And so if you are very good at what you do, you have a duty and obligation to help people and to sell. And so serving people is of that highest level. You do not just want to sit back and wait for a month because someone else is launching. How's that going to help you? How's that going to help your clients? It's not. So really lean into this idea that People need to be served and that is your job because it truly is, right? Like until you get to a million as a CEO, your job is purely selling. Yes, you will do everything else and you will do many other things and you'll have team to help you, but truly you will focus on sales. You hit the million, maybe you are at the two million point. You're still going to have sales in your head wired through you knowing that that's what you need to do. And if you're at 10 million, then great. But you're still, you still know that that's where you're going, right? You still know that sales is on the agenda and it's something that needs to happen. And so I'd really suggest to you that you just have that in your head of like, yes, this is not about someone else's business. This is about my business and where I'm moving to. The other thing I want you to remember is that the industry is way bigger than you think it is. Even if you feel like you've been in your industry for 10 years, you know it inside out on the back of your hand... I can guarantee you that there are people in your industry who you have not heard of yet across the globe, in different niches, in different, you know, if you do marketing and you think you know X, Y and Z about video marketing, but do you know X, Y and Z about video marketing in X niche? There will be somebody who is very apt in that area that you don't even know of and aren't aware of. And so before you go picking all your apples and putting them all in a row and saying that, well, I can't sell because this leader is doing this, you have to remember that there is thousands if not millions of people who do what you do and you don't even know about them and so they've probably been launching at the same time as you for you know years and years and years and you've never been any of the wiser so why is it that just because you're aware of a competitor that you decide that you are so threatened by it and you can't act and do anything and you feel paralyzed by it and then what some people do is instead of they have that experience and then they don't just stop there they actually go and try and pull somebody else down or they try and discredit work that somebody does or the messaging etc and so I just want you to take stock of this and say I know this is a really honest conversation for you to maybe have with yourself but you need to have a think about it and say yeah this industry is way bigger than I'm allowing myself to think if you only work with women go out of your space and look at all the men that's leading (laughs) in the industry you know have a think about that it's like I only work with men I mean I only work with women sorry in the business that is Mayor James and you know that therefore you're in a vacuum of who you see as your competitors. The other thing I want to touch on with this is talking about the fact that you want to cheer people on. Like, I don't understand this idea that just because you're in an industry, your competitors and the people that do 
the same as you are somehow this thing to try and avoid and put down and that it isn't a good thing. Your competitors are your colleagues. We are all in business together. And so it's really important that you actually get to know your people and you get to, you know, say hi to them and have a conversation with them because you never know when you're going to need each other. You never know when someone's got too much work so you want to pass work to someone else. And for some of you, if you feel that against your big competitors, you're going to sit there listening to me and go, yeah, but that's not true, May, because they'll always have capacity to be able to serve. So, you know, that's not going to work. But I just want to say you're already making a deterministic mindset if you're thinking that. I want you to pull back from that. I want you to think about, no, actually, yeah, you know, the competitors in my space, do I even know them? Do they know who I am? Have I even had a conversation with them? Because if you're feeling threatened by someone, you should just go and have a conversation with them. Because it reminds you that they're a normal person and you should be cheering them on. I'm not saying you have to, like, be best friends with them. But I think it's really important that we take a moment to stop pulling each other down, especially as women. I really want to say that strongly as women because I've seen it be vicious and unpleasant and, quite frankly, bullying to some degree that happens in some industries. And it happens around the world that it's not okay for us to just feel threatened. And we're going to come on to that in a moment. But really thinking about, you know, how can you support the people who are around you in your industry? Because if you want to make change in your industry, which so many of you will do, how many of you, you know, if you're listening to this, you will be someone who is value driven and you're someone who wants to make a positive change. You can't do that on a huge global scale without incorporating other people into the the journey. I truly believe that, you know, it's so much easier if you have a group of people who believe one thing than having one person. And so think about that. What is your mission and how does it align to their mission? Because I'm pretty sure that they're probably quite similar and they're probably not worlds apart. And so before you go down this route of this toxic activity that you send your brain down, think about it. Think about actually, yeah, why am I feeling like this because actually we're both probably similar in some areas I'm not saying you have to agree on everything there's going to be a point of difference that's the point of the business but you've got to have some kind of interest in what the other person's doing the next thing I want you to think about and just tell you to do is please don't stop selling please do not stop selling just because someone else is selling something just because someone else is launching something I do not care the people around you do not care the people who are in your audience and who are in your space in your world might not even have a clue who this person is that you are so obsessed with and this is the thing you need to get in your head so many of people if you especially in the online business space or you are in a space where you spend a lot of time consuming other people's content you start to get in such a vacuum that you think every single person knows the same people you know and you have to remember that your ideal client is not you your ideal client is might not even have half the knowledge that you do and therefore they might not have a clue who this person is and so I've seen this happen a lot where people just say well I'm not going to sell I'm like well why this group of people you have probably don't even know this other person exists so unless you're going to be an affiliate for them what are you bothered about like what's the issue and I think so many people really kind of get themselves confused with this so I want you to sit back and just breathe and think yeah do you know what actually I can sell Now, let's just say, for example, you do have an audience that you feel are very overlapped and are very combined together. I still believe that you can sell. I think there's a real way of doing it. I think there needs to be integrity and I think you need to be really clear on what is your offer versus someone else's. But I I still don't think you have to stop selling altogether. It just doesn't make business sense. If you look at it on a commercial scale and we'll take the beauty industry, for example... Beauty products are launched every single week. Every single week, there is a beauty product. Every single month, there is a beauty product launch by every single brand, pretty much, you know? Like, it's all over. They never stop selling, ever. They're advertising every single day, 24 hours a day, on multiple, multiple different platforms. And they constantly do that via various means. And they constantly do that. They, you know, they're always promoting. And they're not threatened. And actually, many companies partner with each other you know they do collaborations they work together because they understand the power of collectiveness and they understand the power that you can have a unique different point you know people don't just want to buy one thing of one thing and so stop viewing what you do as some kind of thing that you're different I truly don't believe you are 
Like, yes, if you're buying a house, then maybe, you know, they're only going to buy one house. But for most people, it is not a case of we will only listen to one person. We will only go down one route. It just doesn't work like that, especially not in 2022. It just is not how it works. So I wanted to give you some questions to ask yourself. If you are currently listening to this and you felt like some resistance during what I've been saying or you just came to this episode because you were like, oh my goodness, somebody's launching and I was going to launch and I've spent all these this time and many weeks preparing and now I don't know what to do. I want to give you some questions just to think about as you move through this. So a lot of this is mindset based and I think it's important to talk about that because, you know, the strategy is it's kind of not really important at this point. It's about mindset. So I want to ask yourself, why are you worried? First of all, why are you worried That's really important because when I, you know, hear about someone launching, I'm excited for them. Like I genuinely am excited for them. I'm like, oh my goodness, amazing, great. I'm sure that's going to be so good for their business, their communities, who they serve, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Amazing. I love when other women win. I love supporting other women. Obviously you can't support everybody, but you know, if there's somebody who I'm no more relatively close with, I will try to support them, whether that's sharing something or, you know, doing whatever. So think about why are you worried? Because that comes from a real scarcity mindset. The next thing is, why are you feeling jealous? Or are you feeling jealous? Like, just say to yourself, are you feeling jealous? Like, is that what's going on here? And it's normal. It's so normal for you to feel jealous. But you just need to have a think about that. You need to think about, am I feeling jealous? Because again, that's coming from a place of uncertainty. It's coming from this idea of, oh, lack, not enough. There's not enough abundance, etc, etc. And then I want you to think about how can I support myself in this time? So if you are someone who is struggling with this and you're struggling with imposter syndrome and maybe you're feeling really overwhelmed and the comparison's kicking in and you're feeling so just in this vacuum and it's circling around you and it's like a tornado almost, think about how can I support myself? What is it that you can do to really double up on your self-care, double up on your mindset work? Maybe you need to go and speak to someone and have a conversation in someone who specialises in this area of mindset to kind of look at why is it that you're feeling so threatened and attacked. And ask yourself the next question, do I need to work on my mindset? The answer is probably yes. We all need to work on our mindset all the time, every single day. But in this specific area, Do you need to work on this? Now, what I would say is I truly believe that some of this comes down to the level of emotional intelligence that you hold. Because if you have a high emotional intelligence kind of remit, orbit, understanding, it makes this kind of stuff a lot easier to deal with, process and compartmentalise what makes sense for you. So really have a think about that and it might be that actually, yeah, you know, I need to really dig into this because it's kind of covering something that's much deeper. Often when we have this feeling of jealousy and lack and worry, that's not actually the main problem. The main problem can be something that's really rooted down, nothing to do with business and something to do with life and something to do maybe what you've gone through and your trauma and your past experience and the things you deal with on a day-to-day basis that really impacts your business. And I know that's quite deep and we've gone there, but I wanted to do that because, you know, we have to look at business in the nuance that it is, in the different capabilities that we have to deal with. You know, we're all, you're li- you are listening to this right now and I am speaking to you and we both have a different daily reality. We have a different setup. We have different things that we have to deal with, different privileges that we may or may not have. And so this all comes into your business experience. And this is why when people approach business in a really solid, straightforward way in terms of like, it has to be this, there is no this or that, I struggle because I just truly believe that it is so flexible and so malleable to you and your business. It's about you creating something. But also the flip side of that is you also calling yourself out on your bullshit and calling yourself out on things that you maybe need to work on at the detriment of other people because at the end of the day if you have got these issues and then you're choosing to take action in a really unproductive way and damage and try and damage someone else's business or launch or you know just not be great then you need to look at that because that's not fair on the other person the next thing I want you to think about is if you do feel threatened why do you feel threatened and one thing I want you to think about on this is is it because you don't know what you're selling? This is a big 
thing. If you know what you're selling, but you're not selling enough because your sales skills maybe isn't there, your sales process, maybe your strategy, maybe you're lacking a team member's support or whatever it is, that will really make you feel threatened, if I'm being honest, because it just does, okay? So you have to think about like, do you know what you're selling for every month of this year? If not, then maybe that's why you're feeling threatened. Because if you knew what you were selling all the time and you know how you're getting there, you'd have a sales strategy mapped out, you know what volume you need to get in and you know what your funnel's doing, then often you sit back and relax and you don't even know someone else is launching because you're just like, well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I know my numbers. I know how many people I want to kind of serve, how many people we want to help. And you have things set up to do that. But if you don't have that in place, it's not, you don't have that insurance security blanket, right? You just kind of feel a bit all over the shop. And so then the jealousy really comes up. Oh, you feel threatened and you feel uncertain. But if you have that all nailed down, you're like, okay, great. I've got this time. I'm going to go and support this competitor because I'm like, woohoo, you know, I'm, I'm sorted. And I'm not saying that to kind of make you feel like we live in this la di da world where I'm saying everyone should be friends. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that make your life easier. Like being threatened by someone and worried and being in a real negative mindset about it is not helping anyone. And it's definitely not helping you live your dream life. And so you didn't get into business to be threatened and to feel bad about someone else who's launching. So really think about yourself of like, okay, yeah, let's breathe and let's chill on that because it doesn't make sense for me to go down this rabbit hole for a month of being really miserable and pulling someone else down. The other thing to think about is how would I want someone to respond when I am launching or I am selling something? This is really important. We have to think about this because, you know, it's it's an age old saying of like, be how you wanted to be treated or do what you, you know, that one. I'm, I'm so bad at sayings. I'm like really not great. The dyslexia really kicks in. Um, but hopefully you know what I'm trying to touch on there. You need to think about, you know, how would I want people to respond? And if you wouldn't like what you're going to, how you're responding to someone, don't do it. It's simple as that. Like it's not a, it's not a difficult call to make. It's like, what would you want people to do when you are launching or selling something or having a promotional period? And then, Think about what that means to you in your business. And just come from a place of integrity and be a nice person. Don't be a dick. Like, I say that all the time in business. It's like, don't be a dick, be nice. It's simple, you know? Just be really human being about it. And the thing is, it's like, if you're worried about money and you have real money mindset issues, then this is going to be hard for you because you're going to feel threatened. But if you do the work on your money mindset, you really dig into your other mindset areas then this stuff starts to become easy and you don't even think about it. And it's why I really enjoyed having a conversation with someone who I did the other day, who was really struggling with this. And obviously it made me feel like, oh, that's so interesting. Because for me, it doesn't really come up, you know? Like I I get, I'm not saying I'm invincible to it or I don't ever, you know, I'm not immune to it, but I think it's just more about how you process and move through it and deal with it and approach it and your mindset to it versus acting from a place of negativity and kind of self-destruction and trying to destruct other people. The final thing to think about when we're kind of thinking about this topic and something I wanted to give to you in terms of practical tips and advice is what you should do and how you can sell in a way that's respectful for both people. Now, what I want to say is, is it always depends on how big you are as a player in relation to this other person, okay? So the first thing to say is, does the person who you're worried about even know you exist? For most people, it'll be no. If you're like, yeah, they do know I exist, actually, then, you know, or you're maybe friends with them. I mean, I don't know, you could be listening to this and you might be best friends with someone and you're like, can I still launch? And you're not sure. I want to just say, use your common sense. Use your brain, use your common sense, be really realistic with what you're doing. Maybe launching the exact same thing is not the best idea. But for most people, you're not going to be launching the exact same thing, right? Like, that's just a given. I'm, you know, I'm given the doubt of... I come to these episodes and this podcast with an idea of who you are listening and that you are an intelligent, head-screwed-on person who is really, you know, interested in their business and dedicated to their business and you're a leader. And so certain things just go unnoticed without me saying... And hopefully you kind of take from that what you will. But I would say to you that you need to really look at your messaging. So whatever you're selling, it's a great time for you to get clear on your messaging. What is the key messages you're trying to 
really in the campaign, in the marketing campaign, in the sales copy? And what is the messaging that you believe to be the case that you're offering people? Because they're two different things, which is where people get mixed up a lot. So really think about clarifying the messaging across the board for your product, for the marketing campaign, what it is that you're trying to help people to do and what the transformation you're trying to provide people with in terms of clarity not just being fluffy. Because if it's fluffy, then yeah, people don't listen because they're just like, well, what does that even mean? Like, what? (laughs) how are you any different from X person? But if your messaging is really dialed in, it's really strong, it really talks to a specific type of person on a specific level, in a specific niche, you will start to create this kind of content where people just listen to you because they're interested and they know you've got something interesting to say. They're not going to be bothered that someone else is doing X, Y, and Z because they're like, oh no, this person knows this stuff. They get me. They know me. I love listening to them. I love hearing through their content. That is for me. And so, you know, you've got to really think about your messaging. Do not go and look at your competitor's messaging and then go, oh great, we'll just use that messaging. Obviously, you know, obviously that's absolutely ridiculous and stupid don't kind of I'm not even going to go into that because I know as I said before I feel like we're coming at this from a real you know leadership perspective but really think about your messaging I'd also say and also on that note if someone else writes your copy for you if you have a copywriter or you know in your business you hire a copywriter I would encourage you to go through and really add your own twist or just check that they truly get where you're coming from and that the way you would say something is how it's written because I have seen that being done and it makes me kind of question things because I'm like "Mm, I don't think that's how the person meant it but the copywriters maybe wrote that so really just go in and look at that. The other thing to think about when you're selling is having lots of empathy People don't think about this when they're selling okay like sales is a conversation it's communication I bang on about that all the time. But the other thing that's really key with it is that, you know, it's a an empathetic conversation. You're helping people with something, to achieve something, to do something. Like, you're doing something in a way to really give somebody something else. And yes, that might mean that they, the transfer of energy is that they give you some money in order to do that. But at the end of the day, it's about empathy and understanding where they're at. So when you're selling to your audience... Think about what do they need, what do they want, and how do you show empathy? Because people will buy when they feel seen and heard, and the way they feel seen and heard is through you showing them the empathy, through them believing in that. And so really think about that when you're selling, because that will help you stand out from other people who are launching. The final thing to think about is you need to dig into your lead gen system, you need to dig into your funnel, you need to really go in and look at what is working right now. This can be a great opportunity for you to go back and assess everything that you've currently got going on, find the loopholes, find the bo- the, the bo- bottlenecks, God, I can't speak today, and find where you've got a leaky funnel. I talk about this sometimes, maybe we could do an episode on it, of, of where is your funnel leaking from? Because this is a great time for you to go into the funnel and really nurture the people that are in there and really look at conversion and increasing your conversion, maybe instead of you going out and finding loads more people. So if somebody's launching and you feel like you don't want to, you know, kind of be as pushy outside in the sense of like, maybe you don't want to run ads or maybe you don't want to, you know, have the same level of presence. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying this is an option because I like to give you options and for you to make an informed decision. You could choose to let that person have their time to shine, let that person have that real active selling moment on terms of social media and things. And maybe you choose to go into your funnel, do a lot of work on it, find all the people in it, really nurture them, get to know them, talk to them, find out what is actually going on and then sell from that place. Because I think we forget so much about the money that is in the funnel, in the different parts of your funnel that is just stuck there because you're not necessarily talking specifically to a set person and I'd really encourage you to look at that as an option because sometimes we need we never do it because we're always on the next thing right it's always the next shiny thing of what's next what's next what's next but this can be a great opportunity for you to go in and really look at that those are the points I wanted to give we could go on for a while but I think those are plenty to kind of get you thinking about this and I hope that this episode has really kind of maybe shifted your mindset or maybe just reaffirmed 
what you thought about the situation. But I think it's really important that we give ourselves the time and space to think about this stuff. Because the more you push it in the back of your head, it's not really serving you or yourself. And maybe after this, you have some action points to go and take away to either do and implement or to go and find out and seek out more knowledge in the sense of the mindset and stuff you maybe need to work through. I will see you next week and I am very much looking forward to it for the next episode. I will speak to you very soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind the scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time.